Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you've all been enjoying the PUBG free to play release. I myself have been having an absolute blast with all the new players and old returning players. And it kind of got me thinking, we've all had so many moments as new PUBG players when the game was first coming out with all these big crazy like, whoa, what is this? I can't believe this is in here kind of moments. And a lot of that had to do with when PUBG implemented like secret loot caves on Vikindi or hidden bunkers or like little kind of ducked off areas that had uh, surprisingly better than normal loot. And a lot of the players would kind of do a mash grab at those areas at the start of the game. And it made for these like, crazy wild plays. I remember watching like Chaco Taco or all of the bigger streamers at the time playing and just seeing like 40 people bum rush a certain area. And it was, it was just a blast to watch and, and be a part of. It, it kind of got me thinking with all these new players coming to PUBG, some of them have never experienced any of that before. And a lot of them, don't even know that these like secret little areas still exist in the game. Now, although the loot has been taken away quite a bit from those areas, so that you're not going to see like uh, you know a bunch of level three loot crates everywhere like there were in the past. But these uh, caves, bunkers, and just hidden areas are still available in the game, and it can offer a fun little alternative drop point for you and your squad on your next drop. Or if you're in that direction, if you're in that area of the map, maybe you can do a little pit stop, go check it out, just explore the area a bit and then pick up some loot while you're there. So in today's video, I'm going to take you on a little journey through every PUBG map. So we have Erangel, Miramar, Vikindi, Tago, Sanhok, Haven, uh, Paramo, and Karakin. So that's what, eight maps? And I'm going to show you all the hidden and secret locations in all of those maps, where they are, how to find them, if you need a key or don't need a key to get into them. So that way, hopefully on your next playthrough, it can give you something fun to go do. And lastly, I'll just say that I really hope PUBG implements something like this on the new upcoming Kiki key key map, which is supposed to be released in May of 2022. And that's uh, PUBG's brand new 8x8 map. I have you know other videos going over that. If you're not sure what that's about, I'll link it uh, top of your screen or down below. So go check that out if you haven't, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, now first up is the king of hidden caves in PUBG, and that's the Vikendi Loot Cave. Now, I promise you, if you ask your friends who have been playing PUBG for a while, they're all going to remember this cave. This one came out over three years ago and was first stacked with level three gear. So it was a bum rush of everyone going there early game. It was pretty crazy to be a part of. Since then, they have removed the level three gear, but there's still a ton of loot to be had in here. So I would highly recommend you go check it out. I'll put the three different entrances and exits on the map here. And in order to get in it, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is get a vehicle or an explosive like frag grenade or C4, and you can blast your way in into any of the entrances and exits. And there's plenty of loot here to kit out your entire squad with at least the basic, you know, level one, level two gear. And it's just a fun area to go and explore if you haven't done it before, or maybe you have and you just haven't been there in a while and you kind of forgot about it. Now, Vikendi also has a second hidden bunker that came out about a year and a half or two years ago, and I'll, I'll mark its location on the map here. This area also has two entrances and exits, so you can get in and out relatively safely without having to worry about being pinned down to one you know, pinch point. And going inside of this underground bunker, it's actually got some pretty cool PUBG lore inside of it. If you want to explore that, you can even see some of the old snowmobiles and snow bikes hidden away. Although it would be really cool if you could get one out of there and drive it around. Now, this location is just like the Vikendi Loot Cave. There's going to be plenty enough gear to kit out you and your squad. And there's a lot of looting area to be had outside of the bunker itself with between all the different connexes and the railroad. So you're able to find everything you need in this one area. And again, it just makes for a fun new drop if you haven't been there before or if you just haven't been there in a while. All right, now next up is Erangel. Now, Erangel doesn't necessarily have secret or hidden loot caves, but there are a couple areas that are considered underground bunkers that many people don't know about, and they can be beneficial in two ways. Number one, just going to loot them, like the new church area that they put in Pachinki. You can actually go under the church, and there's a bunch of loot in the library area, but if you go to the back wall, you can actually open the sliding wall and get access to another room behind that, where you do tend to find sniper rifles, DMRs, and even sometimes a level three vest. So definitely a good place to go check out. The only problem with the church is that there's only two entrances and exits to the entire building, and they're all really close together. So this could be pretty easily held down if a team knows that you're in there. So just be careful with that. 
Now, also in Erangel, there's a certain type of building design. Usually they have these red flags or blue flags around the building to signify that type of building that it is. And there is an entrance uh, to the underground bunker inside the building and outside the building as well. You can gain access to this just by shooting the wooden panels. And once you go down there, you also see that there's a pretty good bit of loot down here too. Also with the possibility of level three vests and backpacks spawning there. So definitely a good place to go check out. And these little bunkers can actually be a cheeky little place to fight too. If your enemy has you pinned down in the building, you can go underground in the bunker and come out on the other side of the building. And sometimes they may not be expecting that. So definitely something to keep in your back pocket. Now, next up is Miramar, and Miramar has gone through some pretty big renovations recently, most notably the South Caves behind Los Leones. Now, this cave is way, way bigger than even the Vikendi Loot Cave, and there are four different entrances and exits to this area, which you can see on the map here. Now, once you're inside the cave, a couple of cool things is there's actually interior rooms and buildings inside of the cave, so there's multiple areas to fight in, to get cover or to heal your teammates if you happen to get knocked while you're getting some loot here. On top of that, there's a guaranteed Marado spawn, so you always have a vehicle to make a quick escape if you need to uh, inside the Miramar Cave. So I highly recommend going to check this place out too. Now, next up is Sandhawk. There's two to three levels of underground area under boot camp that is jam packed with loot a bunch of different rooms and nooks that you can loot in or hide behind if you're getting chased by an enemy. And what's really cool about this bunker is that it's actually tied into the PUBG lore. So if you've ever seen the loot trucks that drive around PUBG, when you destroy those, if you go to loot them, you'll sometimes notice they have special weapons indicated by the player's name on the weapon. So like Julie's Car 98 or Lunch Meets AK. And they were part of the Sandhawk Four, the four members of the Battle Royale that escaped Sandhawk. And that's how they kind of incorporated the lore into PUBG and implemented the Blue Zone Jammer backpack because they said that these four characters use the Blue Zone Jammer backpack to escape the battlegrounds and you know get out to new locations and areas, which is just kind of cool to have lore incorporated into the game that you can visit every day. Now, I will say I'm not a big fan of underground areas to fight in PUBG just because the vertical audio can be a bit of a pain to figure out if someone's above you, below you, or how far below you they are. In addition, I really wish there was some kind of audio or visual cue that would let you know if someone were below you. And I think something pretty cool that they could do would be to have like a dual button press that you have to do for the boot camp that opened up, you know, like a, a big metal door that let all the players know somebody was entering or exiting the bunker. On top of that, what could be really cheeky is that after a certain amount of time, like let's say after phase one, the bunker alarm goes off and it gets flooded with water. And that would just prevent players from staying down there and camping the whole game, which I think would be a nice balance. But still overall, it's a pretty cool place to go check out if you're interested in the PUBG lore. And the next time you drop boot camp, if you're hearing footsteps and you just can't find the enemy, that's probably where they are. All right, moving on to Karakin. Now, we'll probably be seeing Karakin pretty soon as it's going to be reintroduced into the map rotation. And Karakin doesn't have hidden bunkers or buildings necessarily, but some of the buildings and bunkers do have underground access, which you have to have some kind of explosive like the C4, like the cell phone detonator C4, an RPG, etc. In order to get into these certain locations, you see the walls are already kind of broken up and indicated that an explosive device can be put there. So all you have to do is throw a C4 on it, wait a couple seconds, and it'll blow out the wall and allow you to gain access into that location. Now, some of the locations do require multiple C4 explosions to get deeper into them. So just make sure you have enough uh, to get all the way down there. But these areas do have a lot of loot for you and your squad. So I definitely would recommend going to hit these on your next rotation in Karakin. And these are also good places to start your game off too. But you have to be wary of one thing. The big dome shaped bunkers that you see on Karakin only have entrances and exits with the ones that have a red flag pole attached to it. If it doesn't have a red flag pole, that means you cannot get inside of that bunker. On top of that, some of the bunkers only have one entrance and exit. So it's very obvious if you go into one of the bunkers that only has that same escape hatch, a team could potentially just hold you and wait you out as you come out of there. And you're going to be very vulnerable, of course. So to 
just be weary of that all right moving on to paramo which we also may see in the coming rotations with either 15.3 or 16.1 updates and paramo is going to have some secret bunker locations i'll mark all of them on your map here in just a second but these will require the hidden keys to gain access to them so don't just land on one of these off the drop you have to hopefully find a key while you're looting one of the other compounds or buildings if you find the key it's just like on tego then you can go to that bunker open it up and gain access to the loot now when you get into the loot room there are going to be a bunch of snipers and dmrs and even sometimes six and eight x scopes and in the center of the room they're going to have a critical response kit now what the critical response kit is it allows you to res your teammate in three seconds as opposed to 10 seconds if they're knocked but not flushed so it's just like the emt gear but it only is a one-time use i would expect when they do put paramo back into the rotation they're going to replace that critical response kit with an emt gear but that remains to be seen now in addition to the bunkers on paramo they also have the flying loot helicopters which if you didn't know you can shoot down and they drop down that big level three crate which is usually packed with two sets of level three gear for you and your team just be warned it takes a lot of bullets to take one of these down and because of this map's small size usually if you're the team that starts to shoot at the helicopter another team is going to run to kill you before you're able to even get your loot so just remember that all right number seven on the list is tago now tago is PUBG's latest eight by eight map and it also has secret hidden rooms that you need to gain access to with a secret loot key now i'll have all the locations marked on your map i think there's like 14 of them total and they're all the same exact type of building with a blue metal tin roof with a big white tarp laid over the top so they're pretty easy to see as you're driving up to them now again once you get into the building in order to get access to the secret loot behind the wall you're going to have to have that secret loot key so you can go to one of these and open the front door without a key but you need a key to get to the good loot which is usually an aed self-revive a bunch of meds and the potential for level three weapons to spawn in there like alms mg3s uh, augs etc the one downside about the tego secret room is that there is only one entrance and exit so again if a team does see you go in there they could potentially wait you out and set up an ambush for you so be wary of that all right last but not least number eight on the list is one of my actual favorites and that's haven haven is pubg's smallest and most unique map to date and we should have had it in the rotation for season 15 but due to some delays and changes they wanted to make to the map, it has gotten pushed back. So hopefully we see it soon. But what I really liked about Haven is twofold. Number one, they have these AI faction compounds, which are signified by these bright red lights on the outside exterior of the building. So they're very easy to identify where they're located. And once you get inside of them, they're AI controlled by a very strong AI faction. Now these AI bots do walk around and patrol the interior of the building. They are extremely powerful and extremely aggressive if you're not careful. And there's always a level three boss inside of it too. So you have to take down the boss, take down all the AI minions, but then you gain access to the level three uh, loot from the boss and a big level three crate, which has a bunch of loot for you and your buddies. So I loved the implementation of AI for this map, and I love the fact that you had these fun strongholds that you could go take out during your exploration of Haven. I'm really hoping we see parts of that implemented with the upcoming Kiki map too. All right, guys, well, that wraps it up for today's deep dive into all of PUBG's maps and their hidden and secret loot locations that you and your squad can hit on your next drop. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a buddy, and get subscribed for more PUBG content. It really does help the channel grow and I've got a bunch more PUBG content planned for you guys in the coming weeks. Now, I also have an ultimate PUBG guide series on my YouTube channel. It's on its own separate playlist with 21 plus videos of everything you need to know about PUBG on how to loot, how to shoot, how to dial in your scopes, how to get the best attachments for your weapons, everything you need to know. So go check that out and let me know in the comments below if there are specific guides and tip videos that you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see y'all in the next video or on my next live stream at twitch.tv slash 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 C underscore dome. Take care, guys. Peace.